Welcome to our channel about rarity cars of all times and the topic of our video is legendary cars that have disappeared without a trace. Bugatti Aerolith, a mystery shrouded in legends. A majestic appearance. In 1935, the automotive world was awed by the debut of the Bugatti Aerolith. With its striking design that seemed ripped from the future, the Aerolith became the talk of the town at car shows across Europe. Built on the chassis of the Bugatti Type 37, its unique feature was the use of electron alloy for the bodywork, a revolutionary step in those days. The inability to weld such material led to the use of the rivet method, which became the hallmark of the Aerolite's design. Mysterious Disappearance After its appearance, the Aerolite seemed to vaporize into thin air. Many speculate that the car may have been lost or destroyed during World War II, but the exact circumstances of its disappearance have never been clarified. This mystery continues to preoccupy the minds of car enthusiasts and historians. Aerolith Replica Interest in the Aerolith was rekindled with the creation of its replica, which recreated the look and feel of the original car. It was a meticulous recreation based on photographs and drawings, preserving the spirit of the original and allowing fans to see what the defunct Aerolith might have looked like. Despite its disappearance, the history and design of the Aerolith continues to inspire. The car had a significant impact on the future of automotive design and remains one of the most talked about and mystical examples in automotive history. Its story is a reminder of how innovation and creative risk-taking can create an enduring legend. It's no exaggeration to say that the Aston Martin DB5 driven by James Bond is one of the most recognizable cars in the world. This iconic vehicle has left an indelible mark in both cinematic and automotive history. Let's take a journey through the fascinating history of the most famous car in the world. The Birth of a Legend The Aston Martin DB5 first gained worldwide fame when it appeared in the James Bond films Goldfinger and Thunderball. While two silver birch DB5s were used during filming, it was Sean Connery who took the wheel of the legendary DP-2161-1. The other two cars... DB5-2008-R and DB5-1486-R were created as promotional vehicles to tour the globe, promoting the Bond franchise. DP-2161-1, the original road car. DP-2161-1 was the prototype, often referred to as the road car because it was used in all the driving scenes in the movies. After the films, in 1968, Aston Martin removed all the gadgets and sold it as a used car to Gavin Keyser, displaying 50,000 miles on the odometer. It was later re-registered as 6,633 pages. Keyser, recognizing its historical significance, had all the gadgets reinstalled and eventually sold it to Richard Luce in Utah in 1971. Years passed, and DP-2161-1 found its way to an auction at Sotheby's in New York. Anthony Pugliese, a Florida developer, acquired the car for $275,000. Astonishingly, in 1997, the car was stolen under suspicious circumstances in Boca Raton, Florida, and has never been recovered. DB5-1486-R, the special effects marvel. DB5-1486-R was another Aston Martin DB5 used in Goldfinger and Thunderball, primarily for special effects. Similar to DP-2161-1, all the gadgets were removed in 1968. It was then sold to Jerry Lee in the United States for $12,000. Aston Martin performed some restoration work on the car before Lee took it back to the States. DB-5-1486-1 are made appearances at various shows but suffered damage during an event in Memphis, Tennessee. After that incident, it was never displayed again. In 1977, Aston Martin USA requested that Jerry Lee allow the car to be displayed at the New York Auto Show, with the promise to reinstall the gadgets. This exhibition was a massive success, and the car was displayed once more in 1981. Following this, DB5-1486-1 remained tucked away in a special wing of Lee's house, never to be seen in public again. Later, Lee decided to sell the car to fund the Jerry Lee Foundation which supports education and anti-crime projects globally. The car was eventually sold at auction for $4.6 million in 2010 to Harry Yeegee, a well-known classic car collector from Cincinnati, Ohio. It is the sole surviving DB5 of the two used in the film production. 
the fate of the two publicity cars. Two special DB5S, DB5 slash 2017 slash R and DB5 slash 2008 slash R were built for promotional purposes by Ian Productions. Astonishingly, they were sold to Anthony Bamford in 1969 for a mere $3,750 each. However, the story took an interesting turn when Bamford's friend Sandy Luscombe White traded a 1964 Ferrari 250 GTO for one of these DB5S. After changing hands multiple times, DB5 slash 2017 slash R ended up in the Laumann Collection at the National Automobile Museum in Ramsdonksphere, Holland. Despite rumors of a 2010 auction sale, the car remains at the museum. As for DB5 slash 2008 slash R, Bamford sold it in 1971 to Bruce Atchley, owner of the Smoky Mountain Car Museum in Tennessee. After being displayed there for several decades, the car was auctioned in 2006 for $2.4 million. Subsequently, it underwent a four-year restoration in Switzerland and is scheduled for sale at RM Auctions. Legacy and Replicas The Aston Martin DB5's legacy endures, with DB5 slash 1486 slash R and DB5 slash 2008 slash R captivating car enthusiasts and Bond fans alike. These iconic vehicles played a pivotal role in the Bond franchise's success and remain sought after collectibles. While these two cars are legendary, it's worth noting that replicas were used in subsequent Bond films like GoldenEye, Casino Royale, and Skyfall. Despite the replica's role, no other car has garnered as much attention during a combined 13 minutes of screen time. In conclusion, the history of James Bond's Aston Martin DB5 is a captivating tale of cinematic stardom, theft, restoration, and the enduring allure of a true automotive icon. Dave Worrell's extensive research on this topic is a must-read for anyone interested in the world of Bond vehicles, though finding a copy may prove challenging for less than $250. Renault Type CB Coupe de Ville and the Titanic, A Mystery of the Seas The sinking of the RMS Titanic in 1912 is a tragedy that has captured the world's imagination for over a century. Among the many stories and mysteries surrounding the ill-fated ship, one intriguing tale involves a Renault Type CB Coupe de Ville. This luxurious automobile was purportedly on board the Titanic, but its exact fate remains shrouded in mystery and controversy. The Elegance of the Renault Type CB Coupe de Ville The Renault Type CB Coupe de Ville was an exquisite automobile of its time. Manufactured by the renowned French automaker Renault, it exuded luxury, sophistication, and elegance. With its stylish design and meticulous craftsmanship, this car was a symbol of prestige and wealth in the early 20th century. The Titanic's Illustrious Passenger List when the Titanic embarked on its maiden voyage from Southampton to New York City on April 10, 1912, it carried a diverse group of passengers, including some of the wealthiest and most influential individuals of the era. The ship was a marvel of modern engineering, often referred to as unsinkable. Among the passengers, there were rumors that a Renault-type CB Coupe de Ville was on board. The Titanic's Fateful Journey on the night of April 14, 1912, tragedy struck when the Titanic struck an iceberg in the North Atlantic Ocean. The collision resulted in a catastrophic chain of events that led to the ship's sinking. More than 1,500 lives were lost in one of the deadliest commercial peacetime maritime disasters in modern history. The Enigma of the Renault the mystery surrounding the Renault-type CB Coupe de Ville lies in the uncertainty of whether it was truly on board the Titanic. While there have been claims and stories suggesting its presence, concrete evidence remains elusive. Some sources argue that the car's purported voyage on the Titanic may be a myth or a case of mistaken identity. The Controversial Claims Over the years, various individuals and organizations have made claims regarding the Renault's fate. Some contend that the car was indeed loaded onto the Titanic, destined for a wealthy American buyer. Others argue that there is no substantial proof of its presence and that it may have been confused with a different vehicle. The Quest for Answers The story of the Renault-type CB Coupe de Ville and the Titanic continues to intrigue historians, automobile enthusiasts, and Titanic aficionados. Efforts to uncover the truth behind the car's alleged journey on the ill-fated ship persist. Researchers delve into archives, conduct investigations, and analyze historical records in search of conclusive evidence. 
The Legacy of the Titanic The Titanic's legacy endures through countless books, films, and documentaries that explore its tragic voyage. While the fate of the Renault-type CB Coupe de Ville remains uncertain, it is a symbol of the enduring mysteries and stories associated with the Titanic. Whether the car was a passenger on the ship or a product of misidentification, it adds to the mystique of the Titanic's history. In conclusion, the story of the Renault-type CB Coupe de Ville and its potential connection to the Titanic is a captivating tale of luxury, tragedy, and historical enigma. As researchers continue to unravel the mysteries of the past, the allure of the Titanic and its fateful voyage persists, leaving us with questions that may never be definitively answered.